Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how I cleaned up the lens, and it's also the time when I would test if it was something that could be tested, like you know, a calculator where you just throw in some batteries, or if it's a video game system, you know, hook it up to your TV, that type of thing. Um, if it's clothing, you know, maybe do a double check, make sure there's no rips, not missing buttons, things like that. And then I showed you how to take photos with my super basic rollout window shade. That was like 17 bucks, it's broken now. But it still works. Nice, good blank background. When you put bright lights on it, all the like scuzziness disappears and it just looks bright white. And uh, then all the focus is on the photo. So I went ahead, I took 12 photos. I tried to take as close up as I could of the scuffs and all that. It's really hard to show on camera, but in person you can see it. So I want to make sure that I get the best photos I can. And I mention all that in the listing later. So when the person buys it and they receive it, they know exactly what they're getting. But now it's time to go ahead and get it ready for listing. Now, instead of just straight up listing it right now, I actually like to pre-pack it first, okay? Now, I used to go ahead and just list it as is right now, and then when it sold, then I would pack it up. But there's a couple of things about it that's not right. And this is something I learned from Bonafide Hustler that has really helped at least a little bit in the efficiency of my system, even though I go upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. And that is basically I buy it, I test it, clean it, take photos, then pack and box, then list. That way I know exactly how big the package is. I know that it is safe and secure. I know how much it weighs. I know how large the box is. I can put all that info onto my listing and then do calculated shipping so that when a person in California buys it versus a person one state over, they will see the difference of what it's gonna cost to ship. So also you do all the work as, you, as much work as you can ahead of time. So that way when it sells, you can just grab it, double check, you know, that you didn't mess up your weight or measurement or whatever, print a label, tape your box shut and send it out. Now, part of the inefficiency of my system is that I usually end up taking everything out of the box again to show in the videos, but that's on my part because I want to show it on the video. But anyway, just pre-pack it all ahead of time. I found that works. Some people don't do it that way but it just it takes all the headache out of it you know if you sell something you just grab and go you don't have to rush and find a box and all that kind of stuff so anyway that's what i did when i come downstairs i found a box that worked with it i actually went through several sizes i keep lots of boxes and uh, if i find them on the side of the road if i see them at especially salvation army they give me any box i want as long as it's in decent condition and looks like a good size i'll take it so i'll go ahead and before i wrap this up i'll pre kind of test it out see if it's going to fit this looks like a good size box, but obviously the tail light is too tall. So that one's not good. Okay, so I will save that for something else. Okay, here's another box. Now, normally I keep the boxes, I just flatten them down like this. So I'll go ahead and just kind of somewhat assemble it just to see if it's gonna work. All right, this one looks like it might work. We can put it in there. Hmm, I don't know. No, look at that. That is so close, but not quite. I would not send it that way. That is that is just asking for trouble. Okay, let me try. No, too tall. Okay, so that one's not going to work. But close, not quite. See, this is why you want to pre-pack. You don't want to sell it and then have like one day to find a box or two days to find a box. Just do it all ahead of time. Okay, so here's another one. Just kind of put the bottom together, even though it's not quite taped. And, oh yeah, look at that. That's not bad. If anything, it's a smidge big, but because this is a plastic lens, I want to protect it. I will bubble wrap it and then I will stuff it with paper. So this is probably about the perfect size box. Uh, I don't know if you can quite see in there, but there's probably a good three inches all the way around it on all the edges, maybe two inches above it. So I think that's actually pretty good. So this is the box I'll use. So let me go ahead and prep the lens first. I will prep the box and show you how I stuff it and what I use to stuff it. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and pack it up and get it protected. So what I like to use is bubble wrap, especially on a lens like this. Now, if it was something super basic, shoes, shirt, jacket, whatever, I mean, that stuff's not gonna get broken. So I just put it in a clear poly bag and then, you know, put it in a box or a white uh, poly bag mailer, whatever. But for something like this, I want protected. I'll go ahead and bubble wrap it. 
Um, if it was a uh, board game, let's say, mm, I'm not really going to bubble wrap that. It's not going to get messed up. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, something like this, I just want to make sure that when it gets mailed and they probably will end up throwing the box around, I don't want something banging into it and crushing it and cracking it and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I usually keep two, at least two rolls of bubble wrap or two sizes of rolls of bubble wrap. You get the smaller stuff and then also the big giant stuff. Okay, whatever it is, an inch versus, I don't know, a quarter inch or half inch, whatever this is. But the problem is that this is all I had left over of my big stuff, okay? It's not near enough to wrap it. And I would prefer that on this because there's there's like more air in between to protect it. You know, so you'd wrap it this and then maybe wrap with this and then saran wrap it to keep it nice and tight. So I was going to just go ahead and wrap it in regular bubble wrap. But when I was looking for boxes tonight, thankfully, not only do I save boxes, but I save packing material and I found some of the large bubble wrap. So I will go ahead and use this first to wrap up the lens and then, uh, you know, go from there. So I just keep this really simple as well. Make sure it's going to be nice and protected. Even have a piece of tape on this one already. So tape it on there. And I'll just use the whole thing because it looks like about half the bubbles are good and then the bubbles on this half are kind of mostly popped. So it'll still be protected though. Go ahead and tape it. This is one of those old school uh, tape dispensers. Kind of a weird story. I actually traded a guy on Craigslist. I traded him a bunch of empty glass jars for that because he was trying to do one of those experiments where you trade up from like a paper clip to a car or whatever. And apparently I was this step between a, uh, you know, one of these and glass jars. So however that worked out, I don't know. All right, so let's tape it up. Keep it real simple. Tape up the edges. You know what? I don't quite need this much. I'll cut a little off. All right. There we go. And my little tape's probably not going to quite cut it on the edge here, so I'll go ahead and use my packing tape. It'll just hold a little better. Okay, and I'll do that better later. I just want to kind of somewhat pre-done now. Okay, do the same thing. So that's just kind of the base, okay? It's not pretty, but that's okay. So now, just for a little extra protection, I'll go ahead and use the uh, smaller stuff. And it'll start to look a little nicer now. Good. Wrap that up. Cool thing about these is they are perforated. If I can find it, I thought I saw it there. There it is. Okay. Tape that up that way. And then I'll go this direction. And this is kind of why I also try to get the best price I can because you end up with items like this where you use a lot of packing material so why not save some money on it because as soon as the person buys it they're going to unwrap it maybe pop a few of them and then it goes straight in the trash okay Whoop. all right one more time on this side Still doesn't look great, but I'll show you how to protect it even better and make it look a little nicer. So that Walmart roll served me well, but now moving on to the eBay roll and the next item I have to wrap. Now I probably could add more bubble wrap to this if I wanted, but I'm gonna have that box is so big I'll have plenty of paper in there for added protection. Okay, so that still doesn't look pretty. So now what I do is I use some of the saran wrap stuff. I actually bought this one at Walmart. It's probably cheaper on eBay, but it lasts so long that I haven't had to buy one yet. But basically, it doesn't really stick to anything except itself. So what I do is I use this to kind of finalize and tighten up the bubble wrap so it's even better. 
<coughs> excuse me, on a handy dandy roll. Whoops. Apparently it sticks to wedding rings. My ring just come off. Okay. There we go. Nice and tight. Now I'll just kind of go over the corners and just make sure it's on well. You can see I'm just doing like one continuous roll and just hitting all the loose edges. If I remember right, this roll of saran, saran wrap is probably like seven or eight dollars at Walmart. And I imagine it's probably like five or six on eBay. So next time I need one, I'll probably get one on eBay. Alright, we'll just cut it, stick it to itself, and now we have a lumpy tail light. It can get shipped. And this is why sometimes in the videos I'll be like, oh, it's wrapped up, I can't show you, because it looks like this inside the box. So whenever this one eventually sells, you see that video, I'll have to show you a picture. Okay, so now it's time to prep the box. So this is the box I was going to use. I did not tape it earlier, so I'll go ahead and do that now. All right. Also, by the way, I'm even using cheap eBay tape. The really thin stuff that tears easy. Uh, I used to use nicer stuff that I'd buy at Walmart, but I've cheaped out and bought this stuff. I could still use twice as much, and it's still cheaper than one roll. You know, I could use two rolls of this cheap stuff, and it's still cheaper than one roll of the Walmart stuff. And the uh, Walmart you know, 3M brand or Scotch Guard or whatever this stuff is they use there, the brand, it's like half as much. I don't remember how long this is, if it's like 300 feet or 500 feet, but I remember the rolls I got at Walmart were half the distance or half the length and uh, they cost more. So this is just how I pre-prep. One thing I've learned about tape is it doesn't really stick to cardboard very well, but luckily this box is so I'll probably pick on picked off the side of the road, it already has tape on there, so the tape sticks to tape. Okay. And I just dropped it about three inches on both sides, and that's good enough for now. When I eventually sell it and uh, you know send it off, I will put more tape on there, but just to hold it together, it's good enough for now. Also, the uh, rolls of tape I got, I like to use in, I think this little flimsy handle thing is off of one of the Walmart rolls. I personally like this kind of tape roller. I know some people get the kind that's on the big handle and you know it's got the little flap like UPS uses or whatever, but I like this style. It's just really easy to use. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tear off some of this stuff just because I don't want to mess with it later. Um, okay, it's got some stickers and things on there. Like I showed you before, if you peel stickers, sometimes it leaves stuff off like that. You can use a Scotty peeler, but uh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and prep it with the uh, blow dryer now. I'll show you how that works. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on and then just use a Scotty peeler and it'll peel right off real easy. You don't necessarily have to do this now, but I'll go ahead and do it. Sometimes I wait till before I ship it. Let's get it warm and that adhesive should release and it'll peel right off. Probably good enough already. Okay, here we go. Look at that, look how easy. Way cleaner than that right there. That's just a quick little trick you can use. Tell you what, I'll use it on here with the Scotty Pillar. Eh, you know what, no good. When I put my label on this box, when I ship it later, I'll just put it right over that and I won't worry about it. So, good enough for now. Okay, so I got the bottom taped good enough to just kind of hold this in there. I want to double check that it's going to fit. Yes, no problem. All right, so the next thing is packing paper. It's basically the same stuff you use like when you're moving. You can also find it at Walmart or where, maybe Target or whatever, office supply place, but it is way, way cheaper on eBay. I got a really good deal on the stuff I'm using now. 
So at Walmart you get, uh, I don't remember how much it is, it was, I don't remember how many sheets, but it was always about 15 bucks. But on eBay, oh, man, I got a ginormous box. Um, if you can kind of see it here. See that huge box right there? That is completely full of this kind of paper. This is what I'm talking about. It's newsprint. It's kind of a beigey gray color. But that box was 50 pounds, and I think I spent, it might have been like 30 bucks or something. Okay, and the stuff at Walmart is, I don't know, five pounds. I mean, it's like way more expensive when you compare. So anyway, I'll go ahead and throw some of that in a box. I basically want this to kind of float in there. Okay, so I want paper under it, around it, and on top of it. So I just kind of, the sheets, this is one of the smaller ones left over from a, this is probably Walmart paper here actually, it's about this size. But the new box I got, the paper's even bigger. So it's loosely packets. Because I want cushion to it, okay? Yeah, see how much bigger the eBay pages are? They're probably like 24 by 36 or something like that. They're bigger and cheaper, it's the way to go. The box was a wreck when it showed up. It looked terrible, but it doesn't matter. It's just full of paper. Now I'm thinking of, I don't remember if it was $30 or if it was like 45 free shipping or something like that, but either way, it was way cheaper than buying it at the store. Okay, so that's probably good enough for cushion underneath the bottom. Okay, see it kind of floats a little bit. And I just stuff around it. Make sure it's not going to shift around. And then we'll do a shake test later. Make sure that nothing is jiggling. And stuffing it in there, but still keeping the paper loose. And then I'll probably put one or two on top to just see what fits. Double check that can close. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. So, it's a little, this part right here pokes up a little bit, so I might pull a piece of paper from underneath the bottom. See if I can get it to shove down a little bit more. There we go, nice and flat. Now, Normally, for you guys, if you're not doing videos, you could probably just go ahead and tape it up now. I'm not going to, so that way, whenever it sells, I could pop it out, although I already know, because it's wrapped up, I'll have to end up editing a photo into the video anyway. This is how I normally do it. Okay, so then what I do is I grab a pencil, and I go ahead and write right on the box where I'm going to put my label, what it is, so I know this is the Toyota Forerunner tail lights. Okay, I will do measurements. Go ahead and get you a good tape measure. I really like these fat maxes. This one is okay. Let's see if I can show this a little better somehow. So I'm measuring, and it is 15 and 7 eighths. So I will round up to 16. Anything over half inch, you round up. So I'm gonna write 16. I always go biggest measurement to littlest measurement. So 16 by, let's see what the width is. Squeeze together, it is 14 and 3 eighths. I'll double check here on the side. Yeah, about 14 and 3 eighths, so that is under 14 and a half. So I can count that as 14 inches. That's what the guy at the post office told me. And then we will check out height. 
and it is a little over eight and a half, so we're going to call it, it's about eight and, what was that? Yeah, it's about eight and three quarter, so we will call it nine inches. All right, whoops. And now one more thing I'm going to do is go ahead and weigh it. So I can write that down, and then this thing will be ready to list. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I said I was gonna leave it untaped, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because like I said, I'm just gonna have to edit a photo into the video anyway, so there's no use in keeping this one open. But on something where it's just sitting in there with paper and you know it's not all bubble wrapped and all that, I can still show you guys for videos. Same way, I'm just using my cheap tape. Like I mentioned, it doesn't really stick to cardboard too well, but it does stick to tape. So I usually start on the side and I stick it to the tape that I already put on the bottom. Okay, and then I squeeze this together so that the seam gets nice and tight. Come over to this side. All right. And just flip her over. All right. Now I'm going over the bottom again. So now this will have a second roll of tape. Technically, it's a third strip because this box had tape on it at one point before. And wrap it up, and then I'll go over the top one more time. And for a lot of things, that's good enough. But I don't like how. It's probably because I have so much paper that the seam still feels like it's, you know, wanting to pop open a little bit. So I could either, especially if it's a box that I had to cut down and the flaps aren't quite right, I'll run it down the middle and then I'll run two down the side. But I think on this one, I'll run it this way. Not totally necessary, but a just in case type thing. Stick it to that tape first and then roll it around. And I'll just go once this way. Okay, good enough. So on the actual main seam, I usually go around it twice with this, with this cheap tape and it's still cheaper than using the good stuff. I haven't had any issues with it. And then other reinforcements, a lot of times I'll just do once. Okay, one more thing I just thought of I like to do is just block out branding and especially barcodes, okay? Whenever I uh, send it out, the only barcode I want the uh, post office machines to read is the one on my label. So I just used these really fat, giant markers, okay? This was about $3.32 at Walmart, but I just recently found some, I'll show you. Recently found some at Dollar General, I think they were $2. So it's almost half the price, not quite, but it is cheaper. All right, and I just blank out the barcode I don't want that to read. And then the coals, I'll just blank it out too. Okay, so it doesn't look great, but that's okay. If anything, it would deter someone wanting to steal it from someone's uh, front porch, because it definitely looks super homemade, so they probably don't think it's anything good. Now I'd say you don't have to, especially all this part, blinking out like branding, but I would recommend blinking out any uh, barcodes that might be on the box. Okay, so now that one is ready to ship. So whenever it sales, or I always say sales, whenever it sells, all I have to do is I will double check um, measurements, weight, all that kind of stuff, and I can print a label and slap it on there. But I do need to figure out the weight first. So let me show that to you. So here's the scale I use. I actually bought a scale at a thrift store one time a while back and I tried using it and it was really off. It was off by like five or six ounces. It was really inaccurate. When I first started selling on eBay, I didn't even have a scale. I would just box things up and I didn't even take measurements or anything. I just took it to the post office and then they just told me how much it cost and here's your options. You know, you could send it this way or that way. And over time I realized, you know what? I could save more money by selling through eBay. They give me a discount. And if I pre-box everything, have measurements and weight and all that kind of stuff, then I can even uh, give options on shipping for the buyer and they can decide how much they want to pay. So this is just a little cheap Accu uh, AccuTech. It actually weighs things up to 110 pounds. You can get nicer ones. When I bought this, it was probably 20 one or twenty five dollars somewhere on there. Maybe nowadays are like twenty five or thirty. Totally worth it. 
All you gotta do is put batteries in here and you're good to go. And I've been running off the original batteries and I've had this for almost a year now. You turn it on, push the button, you let it zero out. Okay, and now it's ready to go. And you can also change between uh, kilograms and pounds. And also this one even opens up. So you could put, uh, you know, something that might roll off. You could put it in there so it doesn't just, you know, roll right off the end like that. But for the most part, I just leave it like this. Also, the other scale I had, if I remember right, the measurement was on the actual scale. Well, if you put something big on there, you can't even see it. So what's cool about this is it has a little remote thingy. So it's a little cheapy scale. Pretty much everyone, you see it starts on eBay, uses these. I've had no issue with it so far, and I've had some pretty heavy stuff ship out. Okay, so let's throw the box on there, and I see what it reads. Okay, let me move the camera so you can see it a little better. Okay, so it's sitting on there. It seems to have settled at five pounds, 8.2 ounces. Now, just to verify, oh, whoops, just to verify, I do this a few times, because sometimes it can be a little off. Okay, 5.75, okay, that's a little weird. That's why I like to do it a few times. Let it zero out, let it settle. Now it's showing 5.9, okay. Man, this one's giving me fits tonight. Okay, again, 5.9, so there we go. If I can get 5.9 three times, I'm going to call it 5.9. There we go, okay, that is what I'm, I'm going to call that my final, ah, okay, Let's see if I can do this. Okay, my final measurement, I'm going with five pounds, 9.1 ounces. So I will write that on the box. I will show you the little code I set up for myself just to keep it easy. I know it is five pounds, nine ounces. If it was, well, now you can't see it, but if it was five pounds, 9.6 ounces, then I would have to call it five pounds, 10 ounces. If it's five pounds, 9.4 ounces, I will call it five pounds, nine ounces. If it's five pounds, 9.5, then I will call it 510. So basically, kind of like uh, measurements, over half inch, you, you go up. If it's over half ounce, you go up. Same thing, okay? Although, I still call it five pounds, nine ounces. I do not call it six pounds, if that makes sense. Okay, so anyway, here's a little code I write. It's totally not the right way to write it, but it's what I do anyway. On my box, I put 5.9. I know that is not how you write five pounds, nine ounces, but I know when I just look at it real quick, to me, that means five pounds, nine ounces. And we are now good to go. The very, very last thing I do, and this is just for the way I store them, is I go ahead and make a little sticky note and I write what it is. So this is Toyota 4Runner tail lights. And I know when I stick it on my shelf, it's probably gonna go this way. So I will put my little sticky paper on the tape like that on the side. I go ahead and tape it on so it doesn't fall off because I've had them fall off before. And there we go. So now when it sits on the shelf, I can just look at it real quick, look at the tag and go, oh yeah, this is that Toyota 4Runner taillight. If this would happen to fall off or whatever, then I also have it written right here, which you can probably just barely see. And I have all my info, the uh, measurements and the weight and all that. So now it is absolutely definitely ready to list. That's why I put all the work ahead of time so that when it comes time to list, once it sells, you just grab and go. You don't have to deal with this later on.